This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's uh, watch itself here. Uh, Meltzer would say Kurt Angle pinned Chris Benoit in 14 minutes and two seconds. Angle insulted the Texas crowd to make sure Benoit got a decent face reaction because the Benoit turn psychologically hasn't been handled well and fans really haven't seen it as any kind of turn because if you pay attention, it hasn't been. They did awesome mat work early, like the best mat work in this country in years. Angle basically did all of his amateur takedowns and was tremendous in doing so and gave Benoit openings for escapes and reversals. Uh, fans politely applauded the mat work, which was a risk because when you have such a large audience, the real wrestling fan percentage is usually low as compared to people who are just going to one show of their lifetime and there aren't going to be as into the wrestling itself as a smaller crowd would figure to be. This kept up for several minutes and the crowd still appreciated it until Angle did the subtle heel forearm and sending Benoit uh, into the steps. Angle started suplexing Benoit all over the place and Benoit came back with a superplex off the top rope in a rolling German suplex and then Benoit used Angle's ankle lock on him. Let's talk about that for a minute. Whose idea was it to start with so much mat wrestling? Because all these years later, it still stands out. Well, we had time for the match, which was very surprising considering we were more of a mid-card match at the time. But, um, you know, we we uh, basically put together the amateur wrestling. You can't really, you can't really call that uh, or you can't plan that. You know, I, I just told Benoit, I'll float with you. I'm going to attack you, take you down. You know, you reverse me, I'll reverse you. We'll get up, I'll attack you again. We'll just keep the motion going. Because when you do amateur wrestling, you don't think about it. You go by action, reaction. So you react to each move that happens and you counter it. So um, we, we couldn't really talk that out. We just improvised that. We also improvised the heat. The only part of the match we structured was the comeback and the finish. How much of that would you have laid out backstage? And how much of that is you guys just going with feel in the ring? I'd say 60% was backstage, 40% was in the ring. Eventually, Benoit gets a cross face and Angle needs to make the ropes, but then Angle gets a cross face and actually did a more believable version of the move than Benoit for a rope break. There was a weak and needless ref bump here. This match was getting over in a different type of suspension of disbelief manner, and the ref bump really hurt the match because it woke everyone up to the fact that they're watching essentially the same thing as everyone else on the show. The ref bump was for Benoit to get the cross face and for Angle to tap, setting the stage for Benoit being screwed. But since they were already doing that in the post-match interview, it didn't seem to serve a purpose. Angle used the newly named Angle Slam for a near fall. He went for a moonsault, but Benoit got his knees up, which actually hit Angle in the face as his moonsault positioning was off. So let's take a timeout right there. What do you think of Meltzer's criticism of the ref bump? If he had it to do over again, would you have done it the same way? I don't know. I, you know, wrestling 101, this is what you need to do. The heel needs to make the baby face look as good as possible. The heel also has to make the baby face look like he was supposed to win. If you have a ref bump, which I don't agree with all the time, I, I actually don't like using them, but uh, sometimes they're good because it shows that the baby face should have won the match. So there's psychology to it, and I totally understand why they did it. I just don't think that Chris and I needed a ref bump. We could have had the match. Whether Chris won or I won, it really doesn't matter because we're both very unique, and I don't think the fans would have been upset either way of who won or lost. It was, you know, having two great athletes like that go at it is good enough. Do you remember uh, using your political power, if you will, to veto a ref bump before, or is that not something you would have spoken up about? I didn't use a lot of ref bumps, but, uh, you know, I used them a lot earlier on in my career and I, I didn't really speak up back then. I was relatively new. Let's talk about the moonsault. Uh, Meltzer says that, uh, the positioning was maybe off a little bit here and, uh, you get hit in the face here. What do you remember about that? Well, <laughs> anytime I do the moonsault, I don't know where I'm going to land. <laughs> so <laughs> It, it's out of control, and uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I misjudged the jump and I got hit in the face with uh, Benoit's knees. Um, but, you know, the, the stuff happens. You just have to roll with it. <laughs> Next up, Benoit would use a diving headbutt for a near fall, but you get the uh, pin out of nowhere using the tights. And Meltzer would say, this was the old Jack Briscoe, Dory Funk Jr. psychology and that both would work a scientific match, but Funk would heal while keep the world champion wrestler credibility by showing he could really wrestle and take subtle shortcuts, which because of the context got over better than all the overt heel tactics in the undercard usually. Very similar to early Don Fry in Japan, and then in the context of a match that looks real, something simple like not breaking clean on the ropes can generate a ton of heat, and Meltzer gave it four and a quarter stars. A lot to unpack here. Uh, what do you think of the diving headbutt? Uh, wrestling fans these days play armchair quarterback about all that happened with Benoit in those last few days of his life. And they talk a lot about CTE and they think that perhaps the diving headbutt helped contribute to that. I've never taken a top rope headbutt, much less given one. So I don't know how true that is. What'd you think of the, the top rope headbutt? Was that a, a dangerous maneuver? No, I don't think it was dangerous from a, a, a head perspective, a concussion perspective. Right. This doesn't really headbutt you. He just kind of lands, his face lands a little bit on your shoulder. It's it's not a very, um, um, you know, detrimental move. Uh, the only thing that, that, that would occur is whiplashing to your back and neck because you're landing on your stomach. Right. So I think that's the problem Chris had with his neck. I think had a lot to do with the diving headbutt. What about the, uh, the finish of the match? Do you remember who would have put this together? Was this your idea, his idea, perhaps, uh, Johnny Ace or Pat's? It was Johnny's or Pat's and, and it worked extremely well. Um, it was definitely like a, a funk type of match where you're a heel and, uh, you, you know, the cool thing about funk was, you know, he could wrestle still. And, but, but he wouldn't always do that. He would cheat to win. It was, it was him taking a lazy way out. And I think that's why heels that actually can wrestle actually cheat is because they want to take the easy way out. The, the less road traveled and, uh, more of a, you know, rob you of the win. So that that's what a heel does. Well, it clearly worked. Uh, Meltzer giving it four and a quarter stars. What do you think of that rating? Would you agree? Well, yeah, I, I, you know, Meltzer very seldom has ever given me anything higher than that. So I was really excited about the, the rate that he gave me. You've said before that there were only a few times when you walked out of the ring and said to yourself, I nailed it. Uh, WrestleMania 21 being the time we talked about before, what were you feeling like after this match? Honestly, I had such little experience at the time. I didn't know how to feel about it. I, you know, I was relatively new. I was only on TV, I think, for a little over a year. And, uh, you know, I, I was just uh, happy that the match was finished. Uh, you know, I, I would make it through my matches and be relieved I made it through because I had such little experience. So I didn't really think about that. Do you remember if Benoit was pleased with the match? Yeah, he was excited. He gave me a big hug. He said, that was freaking awesome. And I took his word for it. I, you know, I, at the time I knew the match was good. I just didn't know how good it was. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.